All right, Ja'Cory. Go ahead and say hey to the people. We live. Hey, hey everyone. All right. So, got Ja'Cory in here today on, I guess we can call it a conversation, but um, since he's the man that knows everybody into politics, we, uh, we got him on here. Maybe we're going to talk about um, what's going to be on the ballot November 8th and um, maybe a little of what we can look forward to of, of possible um, candidates winning. Well, thank you, Zed, for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming on. You know, a lot's at stakes in this election. We look at the country. We look at what's going on. I mean, it doesn't really take very far to look when you buy gas, when you buy groceries, and you look at the prices of things, and you look at where our country is. Our country's changed a lot since COVID. Our country's changed a lot in one president to the next. So when you look at things that way, and then you look at what we are, where we are as a country, where we are as education, you realize we're in trouble. So you look at the ballot, and you look at so many people that are running, you know how important this election is. So, I mean, I, I'm so excited to be here to go over what's at stake, what's at stake in our county, what's at stake in our state, and what's at stake in the um, United States of America. Yeah, that's right. Um, ever since the Biden administration taken over, we, we felt it um, here in small town, Dillon, and, and they, we felt it across the nation. You can see it happening, and like you said, mentioned the grocery stores, the uh, gas stations, and that's the impact that is going to affect local elections. And Absolutely. that's the national impact that's going to affect local elections. And, um, you yeah, know, I mean, some, something needs to change. Well, I mean, you look at, I'll, I'll use this, and we have a congressman race seven, um, congressional race seven, and we have Russell Fry that's running. And, you know, Russell Fry is, it used to be the majority leader for the U.S. House of Representatives. So I got an opportunity to really get to know who Russell is and what he's about. You know, South, Russell... South Carolina House. It was still the PM fund. South Carolina House Representative. But when Russell was a South Carolina House Representative, he led the he, charge. He still is, no? Well, he will be until, <laughs> you know, the end of this election if people get out and vote. That's right, if but, people get out and vote. But Russell led the charge to increase teachers' pay, to put more money in South Carolinians' pockets by helping, at first... Um, Cut things in South Carolina by adding more businesses to South Carolina as well as cutting taxes. So Russell understands the importance of putting money back in the pockets of everyday South Carolinians. Yeah. And that's what we need. It's as simple as that. Well, we, need, we need money in the hands of South Carolinians. Russell's running on the Republican platform. And that, you know, that's, that's what Republicans do. Um, maybe that'll be a theme throughout this, but... Uh, you know, he's run, he's running against Daryl Scott. I really haven't heard much from Daryl, but I've seen Russell all over the place. And that just shows me, um, you know, I, I talked to him. I know him a little bit. Uh, he's a hard worker. He's getting out. He wants this. Even though South Carolina is a red state, uh, at, or the 7th District is a red district, without question, you know, having Horry County in there. But... You know, he's still out there working for it, and, and he uh, made a large accomplishment in the primary um, election against Tom Rice, which I know you might be a little friendly with. And, and Tom is a good friend of mine. Tom's a good guy. Yeah. You know, and, and I think Tom, I think Tom was, was, was good for District 7. I just think he, he made one bad choice. Um, he stands by that choice, which, you know, good on him if that's his principles. But um, but yeah, you know, I think moving forward, Russell will be good also. And us. I and I think Russell's Russell's good for the seventh district. Russell has served his constituents in his district. He's shown over and over that he is the person that can lead South Carolina forward. And I I'm looking forward to seeing what Russell can do. Yeah, you know, and just yeah, to, I'm, yeah, I'm excited too. Just to move on, because you know, there's a little more elections. You know, we have Tim Scott and Crystal Matthews, and I. No, both of them very well. I know their track record very well. Um, actually, they're both from Charleston. So they're really? both two people from Charleston. Uh, Crystal's in the South Carolina House of Representatives. She's done well for her district. Um, she's a single mom. She works hard. 
But when you look at the experience and you look at the record, Tim Scott is a person that has delivered for South Carolina. He has delivered yeah. when it comes to things as opportunity zones. He has Tim Scott led the charge for tax credits in the United States to give bring more businesses, not to South Carolina, but the United States. And so when you look at the track record of someone like Tim Scott, he is ready and he is prepared to do the job day one. Agreed. And, and I think Tim Scott, like you said, he's making a lot of moves, a lot of good moves, very strategic. Um, and I wouldn't put it past him to, to possibly make a bid for uh, the presidential seat, maybe here in the next few terms. Uh, I hope the next one. But. The, the next one. And, and Tom Rice, I, wouldn't, I, would, I don't, wouldn't put it past Tom Rice for maybe running for governor. I think he, he would possibly have a shot there. Um, you know, given a little bit of time and, and, and that goldfish memory that some people have. But, <laughs> but you know, going back to the Senate race, um, like, you, you know Crystal Matthews. I don't know her that well, but uh, I do catch up with Project Veritas every once in a while. <laughs> and she did make it on there. Um, you know, they, they do some, I guess some people can call it questionable work, uh, but you know, they get some things out there, and she she, uh, she made it on there. She made some off-handed remarks a little bit. But, um, yeah, y'all can check that out if you want to. And, and I'll and give it, my comment on it. I, I think that's where you go to experience. When you look at Tim Scott, he's a statesman. He, he understands right. how things work. Crystal is not ready to serve as the U.S. Senate. And I, I mean, not being a partisan race. Tim Scott is the person ready for the job, David. Yeah, Tim Scott. He and there's at least, no, there's he no seems, on the job training. He seems to me as 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 to be a professional uh, on and off the court per se. Absolutely. Um, and and he's like like you said, he he's doing very well for South Carolina so far, and I wouldn't uh, put it past him for you know shooting for a higher seat here for too long. And I think he I think he'll be great and. Uh, just to just to move on, just to swift gears. I mean, we see right now as we're talking, the governor of South Carolina is debating Joe Cunningham, yep. and Joe Cunningham served as Congress member for the first district. And Harry McMaster has been in politics for several years. He's served as the Attorney General, um, the Lieutenant Governor, and now the Governor. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stuff at stake. You know, there's a hundred and twenty thousand new people that are from south in south carolina because of the census not 80 percent of them are women so we're looking at roe versus wade we're looking at the abortion bills that's coming out of south carolina so we have a new trend but one of the biggest things of that race that's playing a part that same as tim scott is experience mcmaster has raised the teacher salary ten thousand dollars he has pushed a pro-life bill that helps protect life in six weeks. And so when we look at experience, McMaster has a track record in it. You know, Joe yeah. Cunningham, as a Congress member, pushed offshore, I mean, uh, offshore drilling and had a um, environmental, a lot of environmental bills in the House, which I support. But McMaster started the Flood of Water Commission in South Carolina. That was the first Republican to ever do it. So he has a track record that he's Aggressive as a governor to meet the state where we are. Yeah, I'm. I'm absolutely all for action. It, you know, I I say this sometimes. A a bad decision is better than no decision. Inaction will get us what we have now, which is high gas prices, which is uh, inflation through the roof. It's a lack of action, and like he's mentioned, Governor McMaster is he he's done that. He's put uh put South Carolina forward. I'm not going to say he's a DeSantis with the <laughs> with the media. But he is definitely um, he's definitely good for South Carolina, like we mentioned with some of these other uh, candidates running. Um, what we got next? And 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 his running mate is Pamela. That's Evan. right. Go ahead. I I you know I, I I'm a I've worked on many projects right here in Dillon County with Pamela Evett from the census to the um, plant a thousand, and I will say, and she talked to my class last week. Um, and I will say Pamela Evett is by far one of the most driven, um, compassionate, honest person I've ever met in politics. And I meet a lot of people in politics. 
And so yeah. honest and politician we, don't normally go together. We see Don't go together. But what I will say is Pamela was an accounting before she was a lieutenant governor. The first day she ever was lieutenant governor is when she ran and won with Governor McMaster. And for people that polled and said she'll never do a good job, she showed them, oh, my God, this woman's off the marks, and yeah. she does a good job. And so McMaster has won the gems of South Carolina that started a billion-dollar business from scratch in this state to serve with her that loves the state, loves her family, and loves what she does and loves South Carolina. And that makes a difference. And so at Lieutenant Governor's race and um, Tally Casey, and I, and I want to say this because it is, it is important, she is a CEO of a major law firm in South Carolina, and she was the first woman um, um, fighter pilot in South Carolina National Guard. And that's a big deal. Yeah. You know, we, we don't serve on the same side, but I think is absolutely awesome that she was able to lead. And so that, that, that's going to be a cool race to look and just watch. Yeah. Experience goes a long way, even across the platforms. Absolutely. Um, specifically military into the uh, the political realm. Um, I guess just to, you know, just to mention Joe Cunningham, like you said, they, they have a, uh, a debate going on right now. I don't know a ton about him. Um, it seems to me as he's, he's a, you know, typical democratic, platform um running for governor I, I i will say this you know joe cunningham comes off as somebody that is bipartisan he comes off as somebody that votes all the time bipartisan and you know looking at votes and looking at elections i i i give credit where it's due when it comes to political talk but it's not true um joe cunningham voted with nancy pelosi over 90 percent of the time yeah in the House of Representatives. And you can't be bipartisan if you can't have a vote that is at least 50%. Or and close to it. Or a 60 or 70, I would give it to him. But he's not. He's too liberal for South Carolina. And I, and I don't think the voters of South Carolina is going to... I don't think they're going to cling to that, as yeah. Joe feels that. Now, there's many polling issues that we have, like abortion, legalizing marijuana, um, sports betting. But the God on his truth is South Carolina wants businesses open. They want, they're want they pro-life. They're pro-jobs. They're pro-money in their pocket. And the everyday American cares about making sure that there's more money in their pocket so they can serve and live and work in this state. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you got anything else to add for governor? I don't. And I'm, running mates? I, I don't. I, I, I mean, we do have a libertarian party. You know, I don't, I don't expect much out of them. I know they're trying to make know. a resurgence. You know, <laughs> I don't. I don't expect much out of. I expect much out of them either. But um, yeah, go ahead and go ahead and take that next one if you don't mind. I'm trying to. And so, um, Secretary of Education, um, Secretary of State, Mark Hammond. Mark Hammond. I, you know, I, I laugh while I say that. Mark Hammond and me and his son are really good friends, and we went to college together. He was the kicker, and I was the equipment manager, and. Mark Ham Hammond has been the Secretary of State for many years. Very ex much experience, not political by no means. You know, he runs as a party, but I wouldn't even consider that counting. Um, he's the person for the job, and he he does well to pride himself by not allowing the Secretary of um, State to ever become partisan or be involved in politics. So I just want yeah. to skip through it, but say it, because this is the hot race that we're going to talk about next is superintendent of education. Yeah, superintendent of education is getting a lot of traction. It got a lot of traction in the primaries. They had a runoff, um, a very close runoff too, if I if I must say. Um, Absolutely. But Ellen Weaver pulled that one out. She pulled it out, um, and notably, you know, they've been pushing this a lot, is a requirement is to have her master's degree in education. And so she went on a uh, on a fast track and accomplished that. A lot of people said she wouldn't be able to do that, but she has, um, which is impressive to me. And I know the hit on her is that she hasn't done a lot of classroom time. But that's not you know that's not what a superintendent does. That's that's not a uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that's an obligation that that a superintendent had. That you know, 
they're the, they're let's say they're the driving force to um, you know what should be taught. I, I guess you used to say. I you know I I have a great relationship with Ellen Weaver. I am very humbled to call Ellen Weaver a friend. I was with Ellen El Monday and the former governor Nikki Haley. And one thing I'll say about Ellen is Ellen understands the value of education. Ellen understands what what we must do to um, keep teachers in the classroom. Ellen has promoted over and over what so many other people have, that we got to give teacher a pay raise. One thing that I will say that I, I love about Ellen Weaver is she writes policy and helps to implement policy. So who better to cut red tape than the person that's actually involved in the policy writing? She's the only candidate in the race that has managed and been an administrator in people. She's the only person that's been a yeah. boss of anybody. Yeah. And Ellen's the true person in the in the party that's conservative, that understand that we must take CRT out of the classroom, that we must teach kids and not indoctrinate kids, and we must do our diligence to allow parents to be involved in everyday conversation. Yeah, I think I think a lot of what she um, is running on is is just. You know, people like to use this this uh, buzz term. You know, common sense. It is. But but these are winning issues. These are these are easy issues. There's no reason. Uh, you know, they're even partisan to begin with. Um, you know, we we should come together as a as a community uh, in South Carolina in the seventh district and and here more locally, uh, Dillon, um, and and come to an agreement on some of this stuff. Um, maybe some compromises need to be made a little bit, but at a certain point, we have to understand that we have to move, move this community forward um, with the with the right foot. And education is important. In South Carolina, we're ranked forty eight out of out of fifty. And so I look at people what they say about Ellen Weaver, and they talk about we don't need change. We don't need change. We we need to elect this person. We need to elect that person. When you have been forty eight or 49 for so many years when do you keep doing the same thing over and over and eventually realize what einstein says it's insanity yeah. when do you eventually change up and say we need to change lisa ellis and i don't fault her for this i'm just being completely honest she went to the best private schools in columbia the best private schools i i, I don't fault it and she got a great education she went to a great college and because of that private school, and all Ellen is saying is let's implement school choice where that the kids in rural areas in South Carolina where parents are in 54% poverty can have that same opportunity to go to the same great schools that Lisa Ellis is. That's all, we're, that's all she's saying. And, and I think a, a good blueprint for this would be you can look to Arizona. They're about 15 Absolutely. or so years into, into the school choice process of, of the money follows the kid. Um, and they Absolutely. they have skyrocketed on across everything with education. Um, will, will it happen tomorrow? No, absolutely not. But I think we should definitely get started on that. And maybe, you know, we could cut that 15 down to 10 since somebody's already done it. It's proven. It's a proven track record. And there's no reason from a from a statistical standpoint that we shouldn't pull the trigger on this. Well, you know, Florida outranked us in education. They implemented um, school choice and Tennessee, and they went above us. And so it's a constant state over and over and over again, giving the money to the students and the parents, and education is increasing. But over and over, we're doing the same thing. And Ellen is the only candidate that has been on the ballot since the superintendent of education, the whole race, that said, we have failed. Let's regroup. Yep. And that's why this election is so important. Yeah. There's there's no reason to wait to, to to pull the trigger on any of this stuff and yeah I, don't, I think I think Ellen Weaver here for superintendent is, is a no brainer and um, Republican or Democrat you know we want the kids to be put first and I think that's who can do it and I'm a teacher you know I, I hear so many people saying all the time teachers don't support Ellen Weaver there's many people that I'm friends with that are also colleagues of mine that are teachers and Kershaw. Horry County, Dillon County, that understand that we're in trouble in education. Teachers are in trouble. And they want someone to lead teachers 
and give common sense ideas. And Ellen is not a new idea. She's too, she's what people want. They want common sense in the classroom. And yep. I, I don't know how to put it any more, any simpler. Yep, that's right. And so we'll we'll move to the county. <laughs> Let, let's go to the county. Yeah. yeah, we'll skip over treasurer. You got an incumbent Republican, and I mean they she has or they have somebody running against them. But he, uh, they I, have I, the, I, don't, I don't see much happening there. And uh, and Curtis Curtis does very well. I I I, I when I talk with the Curtis, it, it, it's funny because I'll ask him. I'll say, um, Mr. Curtis, um, do you like this person? Do you like that person? Just joking with them, and they'll be a Democrat. Yeah. And I and I and I and he'll he'll probably get mad at me if you see it, but I'll say it. The Dick Harpoolian um is a Democrat. I said, Curtis, do, do you like him? He said, Oh, I love him. I said, Why? He said, because he loved to cut taxes. And so <laughs> I, I don't think he would have any issue in yeah. his race, but people definitely need to get out and vote, either one. But they definitely need to vote for Curtis. He's, he's a good guy. But we'll get to the county. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, let's get to the county. Maybe we'll focus on these, maybe a little bit more. Just hits home for me more so than you. I know you don't you don't stay in Dillon as oh, much as you want true. to. <laughs> but um but no. Yeah, District fifty five. I think I think this is a contested race more Absolutely. so than um Jackie has been in the recent past. Um I I don't know man. I I think Jackie will take it, but the uh, Republican Party is going to get, on the local level, is going to get significant votes because of the Democratic Party on a national level. Absolutely. I think that's a, I, I, I think that's actually a good point. But that race, and I, and I want to start out saying this, because Robert Norton is a good guy. He's, a, he's an officer. He's a cop. Yeah. His father, he's a father. Um, he's, a, he's a fort guy. You know, and so I, I want to say that, and he is a great guy, and I, I I like him as a person. But you know, Jackie is a person that I I support. You know, I'm going to vote for, and I'm a conservative. I I look at Jackie's record in the South Carolina House of Representatives. He has a 93 percent conservative record in the U.S. House. He's yeah. pro life. He's pro jobs. And he's pro business, and he has brought more money back to Dillon County than any House member we have. We have, and I and I'll say this before I get cut off, but we have two members, House of Representative and Senator Kent William. He's on the finance. Representative Hayes is on the finance. We've never had two members on the finance in Dillon County's history, and they have brought millions of dollars to our schools, our businesses, and $3 million just this year to our sheriff department. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can hit Jackie on the money that he's brought in. But I will follow <laughs> up. I will follow up with, uh, I, I got really two points um, to make. And, and I think, I mean, I kind of know the answer to these. And we hit on education, talking about Dillon, or talking about South Carolina being very, very low on education um, across the states. Um, but then you can look at Dillon, and Dillon is right there at the bottom when it comes to the state itself. I, I would disagree, and this is why I disagree. When it when we look at scores, and I, and I'm not being you know partisan at, at just been te been a teacher looking at our scores. We are struggling after COVID. We we are absolutely struggling yep. after COVID. I think that's across the board. Test scores are low, but when I look at scores. And, and I'll speak for my school, Lakeview. And we are testing higher than a state average. We are testing higher than schools across the state. I don't think we're too much in trouble. When I look at scores in Latter, when I look at some sections of Dillon, of their scores in English 1 or Biology 1 or what, what you said, U.S. history, we are at a score higher than the test at, um, state average in many schools across the state. So I wouldn't say we're in trouble. Where, where I'll say we're in trouble is our resources. We are in trouble. We are in trouble of our kids that can't read and write. Yeah. And when you, look, when you look down the road to Florence, Marlboro, Marion, we're all in trouble. And I, and I get that. And, and I, I'll say that to the T. But what starts in education is resources. Not nicer buildings, computers, thing, new books. And I look at my students that has never had books in, in Lakeview for every student that has all 90 new books this term. 
I look at the brand new elementary school being built. I look at the new Dillon Middle School that's under Coach Hayes' leadership. I look at the new schools in Latta and the new gyms in Latta. Yeah, we that's resources. We're definitely you know making some progress here in the last few months. Um, or years, because the middle school was built four years, like four or five the, years. The middle ago. school was built, that's right, and then they had the theater and the, the offices added on. Um, yeah, we're, we're making progress. I'm not, I'm not doubting that. Um, would I like to see it go a little bit faster? Absolutely. Um, I would too. And then another sticking point when it comes to education is the school board. And I know, I know, I, I'm assuming I know your stance on this. You know, Jackie's been there for a little while, and he he still has an appointed school board or we still have an appointed school board and he you know he he has a large say so in how that's um constructed i know a lot of people are advocating for an elected school board um you know i myself am not convinced but i wouldn't uh i wouldn't i wouldn't be opposed to it you know i i talk about elected school here elected school board a lot and, I, and, and I'm a teacher, and I have many colleagues where we, we feel comfortable to teach. That, that's weird. Yeah. No, and, I, and it's weird. I, I see many members of city council and county council across the state. When there's an issue in the county, that person will go to the county council, and they will manhandle the, the um, county administrator to do something. Now, not just in Dillon. This is all across the state. Um, I see school um, parents that, or big donors that go to school board members, manhandle, and fire a superintendent if they can't get teachers fired. And you know who loses in the end of that? It's the students. And so I understand what people are saying. But I will ask them to look at Latta and Lakeview. Two districts with a very low tax base. If we had an elected school board in our county, if we close down the schools of Latta and Lakeview, what it would do to our community. We have a we have two schools where there's not much money to go in their community, but our school board, which does a good job and they don't get paid, they don't get insurance, do everything in their power to keep the schools open. So I don't focus too much on the school board or elected school board. I focus on so much on what scores look like, how parents feel, what our district look like. That, that never comes to my mind. I know people... Yeah run on it and they talk about it, but the acts, the average educator or the actual superintendent of these districts, how they feel, I think that's important. Yeah, a lot of them are more involved too. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm not wholly convinced, but I, like I said, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I, I, I wouldn't do it outright. I would do, it, it would be um, gradual, maybe and, two or four at a time. And I will say this. Many people say, you know, Dillon County, we, we the only person that appoint our school board members. That's not true. I mean, we're a fully appointed um, school board, but we have places like Anderson County. They have 5-4. Um, they elect 4, they appoint 5. So Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to something like that. It's at, not, least, at least initially and, and, and see how it goes from there. And there, there's many school board members that um, are elected full, and because of them breaking the law and stealing money, they become appointed half 5-4. So... You know, we it, people say yeah. that, but we we're not. It's not new. So I just want to throw that out there. Yeah. Um. And then I would like to see how how this goes for Jackie. I would like to you know see what the D behind his name is gonna do to um to his. You know his votes. Like I said, a lot of people are going to run in. I talked. I've talked to two people today that said they went up to the polls. Um, early voted straight Republican. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, I'm not saying that's going to be his downfall, but well, it's going to hurt for sure. It's absolutely going to hurt. And I think. Well, cut you off real quick. I think he. I wouldn't put it past him for not thinking about putting R beside his name at least for this election. You know, he he is a very intelligent man. Um. He's been doing this a long time, and he knows which way uh, the the people are leaning, especially when it comes to drastic change that has happened in the last few years. I'm sure he's considered it, um, but you know he's still got still got the diva side of his name, and a lot of people I, I are going to hit that R with, button. I would disagree with you on that, and and this is why. If you ask any party chair in the Republican Party, Drew McKissick, and you ask um, Trav. 
um, and the Democratic Party. Coach Hayes is so far removed for party that is not even fun. So when it comes to D and R, I'm gonna be honest with you, and, and Coach Hayes is probably disagree with me. He just signs up. Yeah, he, he, his record well, I, I tell speaks you this. for him. Maybe, maybe so, but you know, and and you can look at his coaching pass. He is a winner. He is. And I think if you know, making a a, a slight party change, where the, like you said, maybe he's not attached to a party itself, uh, but it does affect voting. And I think he's a winner. You know so, why Coach Hayes is a winner, and many past players will agree with me, is because he knows how to build a team. And I think that's what he's done here in Dillon County with his record, his honesty, his integrity, and what he's done in our school system, he's done in our law enforcement. He has created a team. He has shown more across this state that party don't matter. And when you look at him, when you know him in every party, we ha he had the Speaker of the House, of the South Carolina House of Representatives. That's a Republican from Florence. Endorse him. Yeah. It shows over well, he, and over. He's definitely had some endorsements, uh, some, some good endorsements over the years for the, sure. The, the focus, the focus to Coach Hayes is bringing jobs um, and bringing money back to Dillon County. And that's always been his focus. Yeah. I guess, you know, we can touch on Robert Norton a little bit. Um, and I don't, I don't know much about Michael Copeland. I've seen a few of his signs laying around. but Many years ago, and I'll say this because this is funny, because I didn't realize I know Michael. He cut my hair when I was six years old. And so um, Michael, Michael's a nice guy. I don't know him very well. Um, but Michael may change some votes in the election. Michael is an African-American man. And so he could take some votes away um, for Representative Hayes. So it's going to be interesting how that turns out. Yeah. And so... Yeah, like I said, I think this is um I do think Jackie will win. He's the incumbent. He's got he's got the name, uh the notoriety it comes along with coaching a football team for twenty some odd years. Um and also being uh, in the house for twenty some odd, twenty four, twenty six, some something to that effect. Twenty four. Twenty four. <laughs> It'll be twenty six possibly. Um and and uh you know, Robert Norton is running on the Republican Party platform. I think that's the main thing going for him. The longer this, you know, time goes on, he's got till November November 8th. I know he's been out um, running around, shaking hands, saying hey to people, trying to get his name Absolutely. out there. And, um, again, he, he's a hard worker also. He's, he's definitely putting the pressure they're on gonna, Jackie this election. For Absolutely, sure. and they're both going to work hard. I, I, I will say this. Both of them are hard workers. I, I've been at events for one event. Um, Cover one part of the room and the other one cover the other, and then yep. they swap. And they, and they and they both are working hard. And yep. they both, you know, this. I, I've been in many races and I've talked to many people. I ran one in Kershaw. This has been the nicest race I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's 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 more cordial than I expected. It they're to be. very respectful um, to each other, and it's awesome. I mean, it, it yeah, I don't what, I don't know if I would be if I was if I was running for for an office like that. Well, you know, it, and, and I think if we if we look at the country. We have to model decency somewhere. Yeah, and I think right. these two have shown what decency looks like in dogmatic politics. Yeah, well, yeah, we're we're very polarized across the country, and maybe this is a you know good sign on the local level that we can come together and and have our differences run against each other directly and still be um, cordial. And I'll say this, and I I want to hit on this before we um, before we go end. ahead. Because everybody that knows me know I've always been at heat with county council for many years. <laughs> and um, sometimes... Well, you, you ain't the only one, but go ahead. <laughs> many times when I see him do stuff, I'm always, you know, like, oh, my God. You know, these people, um, they lead us. But we got District 5. And it's Kenny Cook and Robert Talbert. And that race will be one to see. We see in Lakeview where we have the first Republican candidate to that represent race. Dillon. That race surprised me very, me very much. Very much. Um, me too. <laughs> I, I was taken by that. And, you know, congratulations to... What was his name? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Say a few hold on. Dennis Townsend. There you go. Wow, I blanked on that one. So what happens when you get in front of a candidate. Um, but no, yeah, congratulations and to, I, to and Mr. I, Townsend. And I don't know... Um, 
being as talented very well, but I'm, his his wife is my co-teacher, which is an awesome woman, Tracy, and um, they're a great family. Yeah, no, he'll he'll be good on the county council for sure. Um, he's mayor of Lakeview, and you know that transition should be fairly easy. And what what I will say is what Dennis showed us that Republicans can win a county election. Yeah, and it's a scary thing because Jackie's going <laughs> to see the same thing in the war, and that they're going to see. Yeah. But Kenny well, Cook, dimension, go ahead. Sorry. No, I go ahead. I'll mention the going back to fifty five real quick that the redistricting that's going to revert right back I is know. is possibly going to hurt Jackie because you know you're picking up a, a heavily red Loris. Um, you know, Lava's not hugely fond of Jackie, but you know, I I, I think the fifty five is going to be an interesting race. It will. It will be this time. Next time, it will be solid Democrat. It'll be yeah. I think. I think it'll Democrat. it'll revert back. But, but go ahead. Sorry. But I will. I, and and I want to get get on this. And Kenny Cook and Robert Talbot is going to be the race to see. And yeah. a lot of people are focused on Representative Haven Norton race. That's a great race to look at. But when I look at Kenny Cook and I look at Robert Norton, I look at two people that have raised the same amount of money. The geographic of the um, community versus black and white, Republican and Democrat, are all the same. It's going to really come yeah. to it as who's going to vote. A lot of those people in that district went to vote out Tom Rice. And so Kenny got so many votes that when he ran in that Democratic race, but a lot of those people didn't vote didn't that vote. Are, because no. they want to vote out Tom Rice. So it's going to be so interesting to see how those numbers are. Yeah, that's, yeah and that's a, that's a very solid point. You know, the primary was a... It was a referendum on Tom Rice. That's, Absolutely. That's, that's what it was. Every candidate in this county Let saw out. it. Yep. And, uh, you know, it, it'll shake up the general election. It, it don't give us an, an actual, um, maybe an accurate portrayal as, as it has in the past of what to expect in the general. Um, but, again, I'll go back to people voting straight Republican. That, yeah. You know, when we do business, I try to simplify things. And... Because that's what people want. They don't want to do any extra work. They don't want to do anything that they have. They, you know, any extra work. People don't have time. People are busy. Um, you know, and so if if they can put off maybe doing a little research and just vote Republican because on a national level, that is what they want to do. Is but vote I think Republican. that's what I hurt Robert because if you know anything about Kenny. Kenny is a community advocate. He has been around here between Kiwanis baseball for some of these people that's grown up in that community. He's been somebody that has been an advocate and worked in the community. I think that'll hurt Robert because Kenny has been, when Richard. I say present, does that make sense? Or yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I said yeah, Richard. He's been present. People have seen him. And I know Richard Talbert from, you know, their business. I think he's a great guy, great man. But I'm saying when you think saying research, that's going to be Kenny Strong's yeah. suit because yeah. people are going to he'll, know He'll his get name. the name recognition, but I think, I'm telling you, voting straight Republican is going to destroy some of these you know, local Democrat numbers. I, I, I could be wrong. You know, I, think that, you I know, don't the, think you're wrong. I just, the mail-in ballots right now for the Democrats are through the roof, which, which you know, we can kind of expect ever since the you know, last presidential election um, prior to that, they pushed them. In Dillon County, Some we can months. expect that. So. Yeah, we, we expect that. You <laughs> since know, 1980, I that's mean, right. that's not... And it's, just, it's only increased since then. And, uh, you know, it, that's that's just expected now. Um, do I like it? Maybe not. But here we are. And, yeah, I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm excited. I think these elections are not what we're used to. Absolutely. Uh, and then maybe some is, things will get shaken up, and we'll see what happens. It, 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 you know, I asked my students the other day, I said, what's the definition of really political science? And then we looked up the definition, and, and it was the art of bringing people together. They said, what? Yeah. I, I, you know, what, what does that mean? But that's what these elections do. They bring parties that are completely different, and we have to meet middle ground somewhere to see who we're talking about and who we're voting for. Yeah. And that's what politics is supposed to be. And so I don't fault people in the party that runs Democrat or Republicans because they want to change the status quo. I think it makes us who, greater who we are. Now, I'm excited to see how this is going to go. I, I mean, I'm working hard to get many candidates across the finish line. I'm, yeah. I'm working hard, but yeah. 
I'm working hard to get Ellen Weaver across the finish line and yeah. represent the Vays and um, Governor McMaster and Pamela Evett. But I know you're putting in the work to get to get them there. You know, I'm putting a lot of we'll, miles we'll on see, my maybe, car uh, and a maybe, lot of gas. Maybe they'll write you a little bonus check. Here <laughs> but I, I will say this. I, I think the state looks better when we have people that lead the state that care about the state. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I, I agree with you. Um, I guess just to finish this off, the, you know, the county, we have, you know, Robbie Coward won that Democrat Party against Absolutely. Uh, He's surprised. Gene me. McLeod, which was the incumbent, yeah. Well, Rob, Robbie's, Robbie Coward's been all over the place the last <laughs> few months, whether that's, you know, Latta election and, and Dillon election, but looks like it's going to happen. Uh, District Absolutely. 6, and then you have uh, District 7, and I think Stevie Robbie, Grice. And I will say this, and, and, and Robbie gets a lot of heat, and a lot of people talk bad about Robbie, but... I don't see many people like Robbie that answers their phone and help people the way Robbie do. And one thing I'll say about Robbie, I've never seen him run an election that he lost. So I will, yeah. I will give Again, him that. Again, <laughs> we, go, we go back to, you know, when you, when you run, I like to say this, there's no point in running if you don't intend on winning. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and sometimes you just got to do what you got to do within the bounds of the law to win a race. And, and, and Robbie is... Uh, he likes to try to win races. He did. He does win races. Yeah, he does. Um, and then you have, you know, as expected, Stevie Grice won the District Seven, and he will Absolutely. obviously make it through on the um, yeah. on the general. Yeah, he's running unimposed, and um, so I mean, we we got a lot of changes in our community, and and I really hope this gets people involved. If they're Republican and they're scared to run because they won't win, and they say we live in a Democratic. County, I really hope this gets people excited to say, you know what, I can run any party and do well. Yeah, and I would, I would like to see that for sure. And, and I think, and and I'll give him credit because a lot of people don't. I think Tracy Pelt changed the mode of that. He showed that it was possible, and Donald Trump, and Tom Rice, because he won Dillon County, as well that you can win Dillon County as a Republican. Yeah, it, yeah, it's definitely possible, um, especially with you know what's taking place place in the last. You know, six, eight years um, on national level and and a local level, uh, but yeah. I'm Anything excited. you want to add before we finish this thing? I'm up? excited to be here. I just would say, people, get out to vote. Um, it's so important, and do everything you can to make sure your neighbors vote, your friends vote, take people to the polls, and we have to make sure we do that if we care anything about Dillon County, the state of South Carolina, and the United States. We gotta change the landscape of our country. Yeah, absolutely. Get out and vote, and and as we mentioned earlier in the show, do a little research. You know, know who you're absolutely. voting for. Don't just go to to click a button. Um, thank you for watching, and thank you for maybe, having maybe me. we'll have Jacory on the show next. No, it's fun. It was next it was go fun. around. It was a fun app. It was fun. Thank you. Thank you. And how cold is that?